PDF Element is the main software I use on my computer to edit PDFs. I think it's really versatile because you can not only highlight and annotate on the PDFs, but you can also add and edit text directly on it. I use this mainly for annotating and reviewing my study guides as well as class readings. Recently I've also been um, experimenting with doing practice tests on PDF Element. Depending on the format, sometimes practice tests can be up to 20 to 30 pages. So I don't really want to print them out just to take them once and then have to recycle them again. So I think taking them online, but also being able to mark them up at the same time is very convenient for me. Also, I think it's appropriate to mention right now that I am working with the company for this video. However, all opinions are honest and my own. As part of the partnership, I have a 50% off discount link for you guys. Even though the software is pretty pricey, I think it is worth it given the amount of features that it offers. Now, I will admit I have not explored all the options that this software has to offer, but that is partly due to the reason that I really don't need some of the features, such as the filling out tax forms and signing documents which as a high school student, I really don't do that much of. However, they are still um, features that I believe are maybe useful for other people. One downside to this app is that it does not have an iOS version, which is kind of unfortunate in my opinion because I feel like it would be very convenient to edit on the go on my phone. But that's just my opinion. And other than that, I don't think I've ever seen a PDF editor with this many um, features on it. Let me know if you guys find one with, that's more affordable for students. But for now, this is the main PDF editor that I will use. I feel like almost everybody I know and their cousin uses this app, but just in case you have not heard of it or have not tried it out before, I strongly recommend you guys check out Quizlet. If you are taking language foreign language courses or vocab heavy courses, for example, AP Psychology and AP Government that I'm taking, those classes are very um, heavy on term memorization and definitions. So I find those very useful for reviewing after new units and also studying for exams. I've never really tried any other fla uh, flashcard software or um, website besides Quizlet. I did try Anki at some point, or uh, Anki, I don't know how to pronounce it, because I saw that a lot of my friends in college use it, but I still prefer the um, design and layout of Quizlet better, I guess. Also, I like how you can turn the flashcards into tests as well as add on to other people's flashcards since i usually don't make my own i usually just study off of someone else's set of flashcards that way i can spend more time studying the flashcards instead of just making them especially since the act of just typing them down doesn't really help me study the material as well as testing myself repeatedly the next app i want to talk about is a app called notion so I'm sure some of you guys might have seen videos of this from around YouTube, but basically, in my opinion, it's a more customizable version of the Notes app that comes with your iPhone, in that you could basically make any type of list or page you want, or you could just use one of their pre-made lists as well. Here I'm showing an example of this bio study guide that I made during finals week. And I like how there's a lot of format options you can do that I like on Notion. And basically you can make a collection or page of anything you want. So I think it's really nice for bloggers as well as writers or basically anyone that wants to keep a lot of different documents organized in one place. Recently I've been using this sort of like a online bullet journal, so I've just been putting um, all the things that I would normally put in my bullet journals collections onto Notion so it's easily accessible by like my phone or my computer or whatever 
electronic device I have nearby. That's also a nice thing about Notion in that it, it can sync across all your um, iOS devices. Although I do find typing and making documents on the computer is much easier than the app though. But that's universal for most apps for me. Next is an app that I'm pretty sure most of you guys have seen. It's called Todoist. Basically, it's the main to-do list app I use instead of bullet journaling throughout the school year. I can go about why I stopped writing down tasks in my bullet journal in a different video. So the thing I find most helpful about Todoist is that you can literally just put the date and time of your tasks into the while you're writing the task and, and Todoist will automatically schedule the task on to happen at that certain point. Basically, I'll just demonstrate here. So here I'm writing um, go to the gym on Wednesday at 5.30 and to-do list will automatically sense through whatever f fancy software it has um, or coding on it that and it'll just automatically tag that task to happen at that certain time. So I think that's like the most useful aspect of to-do list. I also like the layout that shows the next seven days which I think is really useful for seeing what tasks you have on the upcoming week ahead rather than just seeing what tasks you have for that day. Last but not least, we have Google Docs. And the best um, part of the Google family, in my opinion, mostly because I just use it every single day. I don't think there's been one day where I have not used Google Docs. So I use it to write essays, to... I used it to write my college essays, oh. Um, I also used it to make my resume, to complete and turn in class assignments, as well as um, open certain class readings that we did that uh, were not in PDF form, that were in doc form. They also recently added this new feature where you can display the word count, which is really useful if you're trying to write an essay with a given word count so you can keep track of how many words you have at a certain point, such as for college essays. Or if you're participating in a writing challenge where you'll, you'll need to write a certain amount of words per day. Another cool feature that I've recently started using is the speech to text feature that I find is really useful as well if I'm on the go and I just want to jot down a note fast or if I'm studying and I want to recite my notes from memory and just brain dump. I also really like Google Docs mostly because it's cloud-based so you can access your documents on any cloud-based device so I can access things that I've typed on my computer on my phone for last minute studying before class and I can also share it with other people which is very useful for making group study guides and group projects. So that's basically it for my top study apps of 2019. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it helped in one way or another or if you already use all these apps that's also great too and I hope you guys have a lovely holiday season. See you next time.